Hi. So in this video, we're going to talk about the chain rule for paths and the speed of function. So I'm going to have a curve gamma from R to R. And then I'm going to have a speed of function F from R3 to R. So, and then we're going to take the composition of F of gamma. And then ask you to find the derivative of this composite function F of gamma of T. So first let's look at what, what is this f of gamma of t. So before I make any pictures, just because the domain and ranges of these functions, notice that um, from R, I'll start for the little diagram, from R to R3, I have my function gamma, and then I have from R3 to R again, my function f. So when I grab a t, on this side in R and then apply gamma of t, I get a point in R3 or a vector. And then when I apply f of gamma of t, I get a number, a real number again. So my function f of gamma goes from R to R. So f of gamma is a function like in Calc 1, that was picks up a real number and spits out a real number. And that is why this, what I'm asking is we find the derivative of that function. I want to find the derivative with respect to t. It's the only variable, the input for f, or sorry, f of the gamma, of this composite function. Okay, just a clear idea. So this is what we're doing. Now in a picture, what we're doing, I'm going to, um, draw a little diagram here, but I'm going to erase this or put them on the side. I'm going to keep this little diagram on the side. And I'm going to delete this one for now. So what we're doing, just to have a picture of what we're looking now in, in context, I have my R3 space, I have my R space, and I have, say, an uh, interval for where gamma is defined. I use this general that is from R to R3, but maybe just defined in, um, it may be just defined in, a, in an interval. So you grab this interval and gamma somehow puts that into R3. Uh, and so this function f over here, my function f is a function that measures something in space, right? Something. To keep things in context, it could be measuring temperature of each point in the room. So f of gamma is measuring the temperature at each point in this curve. So you grab a t here, and that gives you to a gamma of t. And as you move to different different t values, you move along this curve. So f of gamma is measuring the temperature on these curve points. And the derivative I'm looking for, v f of gamma dt, is finding the rate of change of these temperatures as you move in the direction of the t. Okay, so that keep an idea of what are we measuring with this composite function and its derivative. Okay, so now let's try to do the, com the computation. So I'm leave this on the side. So if I want to find the derivative of this, all that really is the following. All I'm doing is finding the derivative of f respect to of f of gamma respect to t. I really am doing um I'm gonna put over here to keep things in context. Say my gamma function is has three components x of t, y of t, and z of t. So these are functions, like a, like a typical curve gamma could be cosine t, comma sine t, comma t. So f of gamma is not going to do something like xy plus z, or xyz, or 2xy plus z. So the composite function of f of gamma, to take the derivative, we need to do the chain rule in this context. And we have to remember what chain rule looks here. It's we need to do 
the partial of the f function with respect to the first spiral, and then the derivative of that x function with respect to t. So these x's are symbolize different things, but they, they do are going to agree. This x here where f is this x function up here. And this x over here for the f, that one means the first component of the, the first variable component for f. But since you're doing the composite function, they do represent the same thing in a minute. So now it's going to be the partial derivative of f with respect to y, the derivative of y with respect to t. And these are derivatives because the y only has one variable, right? Um, and then the partial derivative of f with respect to z times the derivative of z with respect to t. So I could write, instead of dx, dy, and dz, dt, I can just write x prime y prime z prime, because I only have one variable. There's no ambiguity to say x prime y prime z prime. So I'm going to write that, but I'm also going to separate this like in a clever way. I have the colors here, but I'm also going to do this like partial f, partial x, comma, partial f, partial y, comma, partial f, partial z. And then I'm going to write x prime y prime z prime. And this makes no sense if I don't put a dot product between them. And now it makes perfect sense. And this is exactly what I have in the line above it. If you take the dot product of a partial f of a vector made by the partials with the vector made of the derivatives of the x, y, and z, I get exactly what I have at the top. And this is a clever way to write it down because my first component, this, is really what we call the gradient of f. And here we're saying that I'm uh, the x and the y symbolize the same thing, sorry, the x from the red and the x from the blue ones, is because this partial f I still need to evaluate at gamma, right? And then on the right side, this is nothing but gamma prime. So this is the way we want to think about the chain rule for path. It's just the gradient of f dot, sorry, missing the dot product there, gamma prime of t, which looks very close to the, 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 the chain rule, right, of a composite function. Okay, let's use this in a very clear, simple example. Uh, I want to find the derivative of f of gamma at 1 for the curve gamma of t, natural log of 2t squared minus 1, cosine pi t, sine pi t, and the grid, and f, sorry, the function of x, y plus z. So we, we know that this is going to be, according to what I just saw, this is going to be the gradient of f evaluated at gamma dot gamma prime. And then I'm going to plug in a 1. So let's find who is the gradient of f. The gradient of f is the partials, so the partial with respect to x gives me y, the partial with respect to y gives me x, and the partial with respect to z gives me 1. Okay, so now I'm going to do, uh, if you want to do the gradient of f at value dot gamma, that means you put the y of the gamma, which is cosine pi t goes first, the x, which is natural log, Sorry, I wrote this backwards. The y is cosine of pi t. I'm reading this from the x and y from my gamma. So this is my function x of t. This is my y of t. This is my z of t. So what goes here is the y, which is cosine of pi t. Then goes x, which is natural log of 2t squared minus 1 and then goes to z, which is sine of pi t. Now I'm going to evaluate all at 1, so this would be gradient of f at gamma at 1, cosine of, cosine of 1 pi, so it's negative 1. When I plug in a 1 here, I get natural log of 1, which is 0. And when I plug in a 1 here, I get sine of pi, which is 0. Um, I did something weird. 
Yes, this was wrong. I was running this at zero. This is not zero. I'm using, I'll be plugging in this one from right here. And that's this one. So this is a one. Sorry about that. Mistakes happen. Okay. Now I need to find the gamma prime of t. So gamma prime of t would just be the derivative of each component respect to t. So in the first case, it's 1 over 2 squared, 2t two squared minus 1 times the derivative of 2t squared, which is a 4t. Then the derivative of cosine would be negative sine, since I have a pi is going to come out as a in the chain rule, so negative pi sine of pi t. And the same is going to be pi cosine of pi t. I'm going to evaluate this at 1. You know, 1, this is a 4 divided by 1. So it is a 4. At 1, this is sine of pi, which is 0. And cosine of pi is negative 1, so it's negative pi. So there you go. Finally, when I was at, asked to find the derivative with respect to t of f of gamma at 1, it's just the gradient of f evaluate at gamma of 1 dot gamma prime of 1. So I'm just doing that product of these two things I found above. So it's 4 times negative 1, negative 4, 0 and 0, and then negative pi. So that's how we use the chain rule for paths.